Hi everybody, it's Mark from MT Restorations. I'm back and um, as I mentioned, I, I have a bunch of motors. As you can see, I got them kind of all over the place. I got some down here on the floor in boxes. I got a shelf over here with boxes on them with some motors. But uh, I picked one out, it shows promise. Uh, I think I can um, get it uh, running pretty well quickly. Uh, I'm not sure what it's out of. I don't want to. I don't want to guess, but um, I think it's post-war definitely. And um, I don't know if the smoker works. I don't know if the E unit's got some problems. So we're gonna try to uh, see what we can do. Get it running and uh, show everybody kind of what the inner makings are of some of these engines. So I'll be right back. Okay, here I am. I'm back. Uh, get things going here a little bit. So, uh, with that said, here we are. We got a motor. I'm not sure what it's from. I could probably look on my book and try to match it up with something I see on a visual. It does roll. Um, it doesn't have the screw from the E unit, which I have a lot of, so... I don't want that to hold me back from doing anything special. So we're going to take the E unit out. Uh, come on, come on. There we go. Okay. So the wiring don't look too, too bad. I mean, it's the old kind of cloth covered wire here and there. It has some kinks in it, but I don't see any broken areas. So anyway, let's see what's going on with this thing. Oh, okay, so well what I'm seeing so far is the drum unit is kind of cockeyed in there yeah, It doesn't doesn't move <laughs> It doesn't move at all, so that's there's definitely a problem. I See what it is. Okay, so <laughs> if you look here the little pin, the axle, whatever you want to call it, uh, the main pin, and the main pin on this side is actually in the hole too. But this E unit moves up and down in here. I don't know if you can see it all that well, but it definitely is moving around and the pin, so it broke off. Long story short, the pin on the end of this drum unit is broken off somehow. I don't know. Something really had to get jammed up in here. But if that's the only problem, that'd be great. The fingers don't look too bad. The wiring don't look too bad. The handle has enough stiffness on it that it does hold position on the contactor. So, until we get it running, uh, moving, I don't know if the smoker works or not. If it doesn't, I might just convert this from the pill, the powder, the old pills, to liquid. Um, I have the conversion material to convert these to a liquid smoker. So anyway, let's, we gotta open this up to change the drum. So, to do that, I use these. I think it's a some kind of a, a ring clamp spreader, C-clamp spreader. Um, I use it to open these up. So, yeah, see, just a little pressure to get that out. I actually have some pretty cool tools when I work on E-units. I may not need these here, but... Um, what these are. This is a anvil that's used to actually um, install or tighten up the rivets on E units. Um, that's what this is for. This actually, you have to take the top off, which is not too hard to do. You just pry underneath here. You pry underneath this little area, just turn it do the same on this little area here. You turn it, 
lift that, pull that away from these two little nubs. Same on the front. Just remember the orientation <laughs> of your top and your bottom, but just pry in here, lift that. This will come off. You take the coil out, and um, you'll probably have to disconnect the wires, which is not a big deal. Just got to keep track of what you're doing. Mark them if you need to, but the top wire coming out usually indicates it's on the side of the contactor. The other side, the wire comes out at a low, lower point most of the time, either somewhere near the middle or near the bottom, but what happens is the coil winding there's a beginning and an end. The beginning or one end of it goes on this side, the other end goes on that side. Like I said, just kind of keep track. But if you're not up to doing that yet or getting that far working on those, uh, I understand. But that's what this is used for. This actually, um, I use it to grab the drum units with. That's what this is for. You get that in there, you can move the plunger out of the way, grab that E unit, and you can get it right out of there. So, yeah, you can see that the, the little pin that's on this side is good, but this one's gone. It broke off. So, um, that's the problem with it. The teeth are good. So, um, now we got to get this pushed out of here. It shouldn't be too, too bad. Let's see what we can do to push that out of there. There. That really wasn't too difficult. Not sure where it went. Let me see if I can locate where... Oh, there it is. There, it just popped out. So that's the broken end of that. We don't need that. Let me grab another E unit. And let's see what we can do check out check out the fingers seem to be okay so let me I know I got drum units I just had an order come in from my parts guy so oh, here they are okay Ugh. a lot of drum units different colors to me I use them in many different things. I can put a black one back in. This one's like pretty new, but th this one, this one's brand new. So I'm gonna put a brandy new one in. Put those over there. But what I'm gonna do is clean off some of these fingers with some uh, cleaning, de some degreaser, which I have. Might as well since it's open. I'll get a little. Put a little shot on this Q-tip. I just want to lightly get these fingers shined up. You can see they were black or some black stuff on them. Just easily stroke that. Get there. You can see that Q-tip getting black. I'll pull some of this stuff off. Get the get better on here. And then you want to make sure. Let's see what these two fingers look like. Get those clean too, since we have the opportunity. There's not a lot of other mess down in here. It looks pretty good shape. It looks pretty good. Let's see here. I can't really. Let me see if I can get this in here and show you how this works. This goes in like this. Spring-loaded. It will hold your E-unit in place. And um, if you have to move the motor over a little bit, whatever, to tilt it down, which helps you, that's fine. The uh, plunger, obviously you want it to be out of the way you can see again the teeth get grabbed by this so you want the teeth pointing up on the back side you want these to be tight around the drum to hold it for you but you don't want it to where you can't get it back out 
So we're going to uh, pop that in. This is how this works. There's a adjustable nut here. You get the squirt in here. Move the E unit over a little till it's lined up well. And then you get that down in here. Get a little, get a little bit of open on here. Get that down in there. Get the holes lined up for the E unit. This has to go back into place. And it looks like it has to go up a hair. There, that's starting to go. Let's see here how we are. That, that one is in. That one is ready to go in. I do believe, looks like, yeah, that one is ready to go in. So let's see if we can get these two finger assembly in place before we drop the whole thing. There, it's lined up pretty well. That's lined up. Let's see here what we need to get that. Looks like that's lined up pretty well. This is in the hole. That one's in the hole. That's in. The two finger is in on both sides. So I'm going to put a little squeeze to it. Oh, look at that. Back together. Pull this out. Stand that up. Take this out unclamp it hopefully <laughs> hopefully we got it now see it's better using the tool um, so anyway this should go up come down go up come down each time it does that I'll get this out of the way to show you each time it does that it spins this one turn one turn one turn one turn one turn so on and it makes contact with the fingers there we go okay yeah, some of these wires, just make sure they're out of your way enough to... These are pretty tight. I usually leave a little bit more slack in these when I work on these and replace the wires. So, with that said, uh, let's put that down in there snug where the holes line up. Now, the holes for these are here. So, let's see how close we can get to those. At least without the screw for now we know it's lined up close enough to where we can say it's going to function as designed I'm gonna set it on the test track and see if that helped at all give me a minute I'll be right back to the test track and we'll go from there okay let's see what we got here on the test track goes around okay that's in reverse now I noticed the smoke plunger is stuck it's not coming down to puff I did put a little bit of powder in the smoker um, let's see what's going on down in there it's warm it looks like it melted yeah, so the coil's heating up. So with that said, got to get the plunger unstuck. There, it fell out. It's all gooey, so that's probably wrong. But anyway, it seems to be going in reverse. Okay, let's see what happens if we change it up. Give it a little bit of... okay so that drum unit helped a lot but I also noticed uh, when I put it on the track 
that the uh, Smiths and a contractor on the bottom. So I'm gonna have to dig one up and put another one on. So we'll go back to the workbench and, and free up that smoker and put another contactor on the bottom and see how it goes after that. Be right back. Okay, back on the bench. Let's see what we get. Uh, so, got the smoker pissed in there, kind of stuck in there. That's no good. So, see if we can free that up. Loosen this a little bit. Should swing up. Oh! Ouch! Someone torqued that down. Let's see if I can get this in there. There we go. Jeez. They didn't want that to come off. Alright, so if we lift this up a little bit. There we go. Oh my goodness, look at that thing. That is... So people have been putting grease on it, I guess. To make it go up and down. Good idea, I guess, uh, for the short term. It probably did probably work good for the first couple days then after a degree sits a while it turns turns to chewing gum and this even has a spring in it oh my so anyway what I'm gonna do I'm gonna squirt this out a little bit and I'm gonna clean this off with degreaser and see what happens I'm gonna try I'm gonna get the inside a little bit or some grease residue in there okay so that's that we want to get this spring up back up in there and so well let's just take this up a little bit looser and let's see if we get the spring in here It just, it just sits up in there. We want to make sure that we get the, the plunger in around in front of the spring. So, let's see if we can get this to turn a little bit to get it out of our way. the spring down a little bit till you get the plunger in place there we go okay looks like it's working pretty good all right so we're gonna tighten the screw back up a little bit get it close to position uh, okay so we're gonna tighten up the rest of the way Kind of working the way it's supposed to. So, in theory, as we go around, as you can see how the plunger works. As I turn the wheels, it pushes up, relieves, pushes up, relieves with the spring, pushes up. All right, so we're going to put a little bit more powder in here of those pills and. Take a little scoop and I would dump this down the top of the engine through the chimney normally. Okay, so with the plunger working. We should get some smoke out of this and forward, or reverse actually. As long as the plunger is going up and down and the element has powder on it, it's going to smoke. So let's see if it does. We're going to go back to the test track. Give me a second. I will go over there.
Well, it doesn't seem to be smoking, but it did melt the powder. Very odd, but I'll have to explore a little bit more. The powder's gone. No smoke. So the element's working. I gotta see what's up with it. So next, we're gonna put a bottom contactor on it. So for that, I'm gonna take it back to the bench and we'll do that next. Be right there. So hang on. See down in there, probably, hopefully, that the pellet's gone. I mean the powder. Uh, it melted it up. The plunger was working. I'll have to see what's going on with it. Like I said, I'll probably just convert it to liquid anyway. Like I say, this little copper spring-loaded piece of copper has a square hole in it. Just just right behind her has a little square hole for this. This slide shoe goes up in there, goes under the copper plate, and this little tab goes up through that square hole. So it's not really that difficult to get one in. You just gotta get it underneath there. I'll try that again. I can feel better with my fingers. There, see, it clicks. There, that wasn't too, too bad. So when these come off, which they do, and they wear out as it does, see, it'll wear out. So when that happens, they, they do, these are sold yet. I get them from my parts guy up in New York. So if anybody needs uh, to find that out, go to the website. It's called ttender.com. T as in Tom, tender as in train tender, ttender, one word, dot com. And Jeff up there will help you out. Go to his website, you'll see his product line. Is just follow, follow the uh, his list of parts. It's easy to navigate, and um, so that should work out. So I'm going to take this back to the test track, and we'll try it out with the other contactor, see if it helps it run better. Okay, be back We're in a back minute. Back at the track, let's see what happens. Backward works fine. Forward works fine. Oh, that helped really a lot. Having both contactors on the track, steady flow of power, um, really made a difference. Very quiet, shifts very smoothly. Old reverse works well. Now this does not have magnet traction. So I'm going to look in my book and try to narrow it down to what engines were made um, post-war that uh, this seems to fit. You know, it's a six-wheel engine, and uh, I believe it has, let's see here, it's got the spoke wheels, not the Baldwin wheels. So uh, it, I, I, it, it, they, uh, Lionel didn't do a very good job of showing everybody uh, like they did in the pre-war days in the books that I have engine types so um, you got to just go buy some photographs and try to match it up with an engine it looks kind of typical with with this type of configuration so I'll find out what it is I'm gonna go back to the bench okay I'm back over here at the bench and as I was saying you know trying to match up engines motors I should say to engines in the field um, is a difficult you know there's not a lot of research material out there for that um, you'll see I have some motors here I have some numbers on them so on and so forth and uh, what I have these are pre-war motors that I have um, just a few of what I have um, researching getting that information I have this Greensburg guide to Lionel trains 1901 the 42 volume 2 O gauge and OO gauge volume 1 is standard gauge uh, different animal right now but 
volume two is a book very very informative in the front of the book they do call out uh, motors which is great uh, as you can see so just quickly um, I have this labeled as a T4 how do I know that well looking at a T4 I look at the configuration this is the armature side brush side I should say um, it does not have uh, a plate on here but if you look at the shape of the humpback and you, if you look at the brush plate that should be there it's screwed on at two points I have two screws at those points with threads in them the other holes have no threads so something to look for when you're trying to match up information with the picture so I call this a T4 which is used between 1918-1925 on a lot of their earlier uh, engines so that's how I kind of went about this so with that one out of the way very similar this one's a little easier with the peg on the top you know it's for a segmented train if you look at the shape and the size it's a, actually I call out it uh, to be a uh, 13 T13 it's a type 13 a which is this type 13 a if you read what it is it's the larger frame engine length four and an eighth this is four and an eighth from end to end other things that you can count are the uh, some of the information they go by is how many plates are in the field coil um, this one was kind of easy to figure out I mean and this size is used very often for the 752 Union Pacific segmented train you, uh, if you look it up in the book a 752 is a very nice very nice train so that's that um, this one this one you know it's a little harder um, you know some of them are very close in shape but again doing the research this is uh, I call this one out as a um, this is either from a 264 or 265 not all of these motors are shown in the book up to 13 is shown so at least there's some the post work books that I have don't show any of that what I did here is go into the book further and look up these motors you can go in and, and look up uh, as I was let's see as I looked earlier I mentioned here's a two, uh, 752 752 you probably recognize this um, this is the motor that would be in here that goes inside that and looking through here looking at pictures I look at the the wheels um, you, you look at any distinguishing marks on a frame both sides because in the pictures all you barely see is some of the wheels some of the bottom of the chassis so on and so forth so I determined that this is either from a 264 or 265 this is a motor from a 255 or a 263 I can clearly see this and this in the picture I can see these distinguishing parts of the frame in the picture uh, of these two motors of these two engines in the book so and also you can they have some descriptions about counting the plates um, the earlier ones had less plates as you can see compared to some of these uh, and I think this one was called out to be um, a 13 plate versus a 16 plate and there are some other segmented trains like the 736 I believe and the 617 or 616 excuse me segmented a Yankee Yankee flyer whatever and um, it's three and a half inches in length where this is four and an eighth same same type of motor same just about everything except for plates and length so that's uh, it's it's hard to do this uh, go by look in the book try to find pictures 
it takes a lot of time but that's what I'll do with the engine we just repaired uh, their motor we just repaired I'll do the same thing but post-war is a little bit different um, they don't have a section in the beginning calling out uh, motor types so all I'm able to do is go buy pictures and uh, you, know, you count how many wheels we got either a, you know it's a three wheel you know six wheel motor two wheel motor um, six wheel six wheel six wheel um, then there's some two wheel pieces two wheel pieces you, you got to just kind of match them up and you got to look at the picture and try to find something distinguishable that you could see you know some of the three wheel have regular spoke wheels some have the Baldwin wheels <coughs> excuse me and um, you just have to keep looking and looking how the rods are uh, the eccentric rods so on and so forth and try to match them up the best you can another good source of information for post-war um, it may not be the exact it may not be the exact uh, picture to look at but I have the um, manual 45 to 69 which doesn't include everything out there today uh, but this is post-war and if you have post-war pieces most likely the manual operating manual has it in here somewhere if it's a post-war piece it's more than likely in here it's a great book to have and it gives you the breakdown of many many engines um, and cars and, and accessories, anything that's motorized, has parts, uh, a lot of it, maybe not everything, but I, I would say most 90% of their stuff. They've got transformers in here, how to make repairs and put parts and so on and so forth. This is a great source of information if you use it properly. And um, like I said, you go through here and find configurations to the engines you have and the breakdown on the motors, you can distinguish on some of the motors that you may find loose without a shell or a frame. You don't know what it fits. Um, many of these fit different engines. You know, there'll be, there'll be one motor type, like this is a Scout. It's a Scout motor. Uh, if you you'll find it in this book, the 1060, the 1101. Uh, I think there's a couple, several others that this is a typical motor for, with some some different uh, items on it. You know, just some distinguishing changes, very minor, but they stayed with it uh, for a long period of time. But again, um, diesel. If you're looking for the trucks to see how they're configured. You can usually type, uh, find out what type of motor type, trucks, uh, brush plates, parts and pieces, so on and so forth. And again, if, like I said, if you look through the locomotives, you'll see two wheel, you'll see uh, two wheel motors in here. I have some of these, not sure what they fit. This is a 1656 M part number. A motor complete is a 1656, which is a switcher. Now, it's not every switcher, but there's other switchers than the 1656. So, um, but this will get you started in the right direction. So if you have one of these, don't know what it fits, more than likely it'll fit in that shell or a couple different shells. It may be also be part of uh, another, another um, a motor. Um, this is a 1654, very similar, a couple variations. So it's easier to go by the pictures. Um, like I said earlier, here is uh, not, it's not the uh, Scout motor, but two wheel, look at the brush plate, look at the gear plate, so on and so forth. Um, they're kind of recognizable and it'll tell you in the beginning of the section which engines they actually come from. This is a 1615, another switcher, um, so on. Um, and that's how I do it. That's that's. It takes some time, but there's four wheel, or excuse me, eight wheel. That would be. I look at how many on each side or one side, but and try to match them up.
So, quick little tutorial at the end of that video on how I try to match up. I, I got boxes of motors, so many motors. And um, same thing with marks. I have some marks motors floating around here somewhere. Um, same thing. I have a couple books on marks. So, what I'm going to do next, uh, I'm going to probably get that motor I was working on and see if we can uh, get it uh, the, the smoker to work. And I'm going to switch it over, I believe. I, I'm going to switch it over to liquid, which would be some of these parts here. And that's uh, be my next video. So anybody who wants to convert their smoker from pills, powder, to the liquid, uh, that'll be a good one to look out for. So again, this is Mark from MT Restorations. I'm going to say goodbye for now. Please send me uh, your comments or your thoughts uh, to my email mt.trainrestorations with an s at gmail.com and please subscribe um, the more people subscribe the more people I can reach and um, that'd be great so again till next time this is Mark from MT Restorations signing off thanks so much bye bye